YouTube. My name's Love Game, or PD1 Piranha if you prefer, and welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon Platinum. Uh, in this part, I guess we're just gonna probably gonna do the gym. I have nothing else to do here, and I fought all the other trainers that I missed before, but uh I guess just so this part isn't nothing but that, we'll check out some of the buildings since there is some interesting lore to be found here. Unfortunately, this is locked. Can't do nothing about that. That is, like I said, for the Darkrai event. It's really weird because you go in and there's like this person who's having bad dreams and you have to find the source of it. And it, uh, it came out on my birthday, my 17th birthday, actually. So that's a little somewhat interesting thing, I guess. And let's check out the library because why not? See what's popping in here. Is this different music? I guess. So what's it got to say? Nothing here. Huh. It's funny because that's like the, pretty much the same text that was in the Gen 1 games. Well, I'm sorry I couldn't see the book in your hand. The sprites aren't detailed enough yet. Sorry. <laughs> Finishing off the last of the Guinness tonight. How are they? Well, you should have told me before I brought this beer. I'll try to finish it before the people notice. Eh, whatever, what do you have to say? I think there's a library in Sun and Moon where you meet the... Uh, Professor Samson Oak. Alright, so let's read Sinnoh Myth. Betray not your anger, lest something will come. Weep not with sorrow, or something will draw near. When joy and enjoyment come natural, as the very air that is happiness, let such be blessed by the hand of Master Something. And those words were spoken often as customary. I already read that one, let's see. Sinnoh region's mythology. Long ago, when Sinnoh had just been made, Pokemon and humans led separate lives. That isn't to say they did not help each other. No, indeed, they did. They supplied each other with goods and supported each other. Pokemon proposed to others to always be ready to help humans. It asked Pokemon to be ready to appear before humans, always. Thus, to this day, Pokemon appear to us if we venture into tall grass. Well, there, there is your backstory for why that happens. Now we have Sinnoh's myth, with a possessive for some reason. Okay, Sinnoh's myth. The three Pokemon there were, into the lakes they dove. Why does this book have Yoda speak? Deep, deep, drawing no breath. Deeper, deeper they dove, into suffocating depths they dove. Deeper, and then deepest they alight, from the lake floor they rise. Bearing with them the power to make vast lands, they rise again. Is that talking about Kyogre and Groudon? Because they created, like, seas and continents. Veilstone's myth, this is different. A young man, callow and foolish in innocence, came to own a sword. With it, he smote Pokemon which gave sustenance with carefree abandon. Those not taken as food, he discarded with no afterthought. The following year, no Pokemon appeared. Larders grew bare. Okay. The young man, seeking the missing Pokemon, journeyed afar. Long did he search, and far and wide too, until one day he did find. Asked he, why do you hide? To which the Pokemon replied, If you bear your sword to bring harm upon us, with claws and fangs, we will exact a toll. From your kind we will take our toll, for it must be done. Done it must be to guide our, to guard ourselves, and for it I apologize. To the skies the young man shouted his dismay. In having found the sword I have lost so much. Gorged with power, I grew blind to the Pokemon being alive. I will never fall savage again. This sword I denounce and forsake. I plead forgiveness, for I was but a fool. So saying, the young man hurled the sword to the ground, snapping it. 
Seeing this, the Pokemon disappear into a place beyond seeing. Hmm. It's like a, a Bible verse almost, <laughs> the way that read. The original story, okay. In the beginning, there was only a churning turmoil of chaos. At the heart of the chaos, where all things become one, appeared an egg. Having tumbled from the vortex, the egg gave rise to the original one. From itself, two beings the original one did make. Time started to spin, space began to expand. From itself again, three living things from the original one did make. The two beings wished, and from them, matter came to be. The three living thing wished, and from them, spirit came to be. The world created, the original one took to unyielding sleep. A horrific myth. Now that's interesting. Look not into the Pokemon's eyes. In but an instant, you'll have no recollection of who you are. Return home. But how? When there is nothing to remember. Dare not touch this Pokemon's body. In but three short days, all emotions will drain away. Above all, above all, harm not the Pokemon. In a scant five days, the offender will grow immobile in entirety. What is that, a creepypasta? Or like a... What, what was that? Welcome to Night Vale, so it reminds me of? And the last one, Sinnoh Folk Stories. We got three parts to this one, okay. Pick clean the bones of Pokemon caught in the sea or stream. Thank them for the meals they provide and pick their bones clean. When the bones are clean as can be, set them free in the water from which they came. The Pokemon will return, fully flushed, and begins anew. There lived a Pokemon in a forest. In the forest, the Pokemon shed its hide to sleep as a human. Awakened, the, the Pokemon dons the or the human dons the Pokemon hide to roam villages. That was fairly short. There once were Pokemon that became very close to humans. There once were humans and Pokemon that ate together at the same table. It was a time when there existed no differences to distinguish the two. That was the one I was telling you about, that in the Japanese version it actually said that Pokemon and humans would even get married, so that was a interesting lore tidbit. It even talks about eating Pokemon, so again, adds a bit of a... Re like, it makes the world feel more real and natural, I guess, in that aspect. Kind of weird to have in a later generation game like this, huh? Because you would hear about that back in the old, uh, back in Gen 1, but when the series progressed, stuff like that wasn't as heard of as much. But, books are boring. It's time to actually fight. What do you say? Let's fight the Steel-type gym. Interesting type, which was uh, also fought in Gen 2 with our girl... Uh, Jasmine. And now it is making a grand return, and even with a similar Pokemon, we have Steelix, who was Jasmine's original Pokemon. We already fought Steelix once, so not a lot to say about it, but... We're gonna keep going through here and see what we, uh... See what Ricky has to offer. The puzzle this time around is these sort of elevators we have, so let's just fight all the trainers first. I understand that, Mr. Construction Worker. That's why I'm going through it in the first place. We have a Magnemite here. Not much to write home about, really. Hopefully we don't miss too many of these mud bombs, because I do want to level up Cane of Water. I mean, that was it? I'm a little bit disappointed in you, Gary. You don't deserve to bear the name of the infamous rival of Gen 1. I mean, yeah, I know his name was actually blue or green, but whatever, it was Gary in the anime. Alright, Jackson. Jackson Brown. I don't know if anyone even knows who that is in my viewer base, because he's a rather old musician. Someone I used to listen to a lot when I was younger. 
And I listened to the oldie station so much back in the day, it was just unreal, because my mom and dad wouldn't love to listen to that, so I'd just be sitting in the back of the car chilling on it, you know? Listen to all that Billy Joel and Beatles and um, Stevie Wonder and all that. All that good stuff, you know? Can we hit three of these in a row? Let's find out. No, we cannot. Okay, good. Thankfully, as a water type, we do resist steel, so that's a great thing to have on our team right now. Got all our bases covered for the most part. Okay, and if water just kind of being the star of the show this time. And I think he deserves it, if you ask me. We also have a uh, Psyche who resists steel as well, so. Again, lots of bases covered, thankfully. Not much to do here, so let's check out the next lift. Which has nothing. <laughs> okay. Does this have anything? There's a pathway going down that... Hmm... What this be? Oh, nothing. Okay. It appears we need to keep going down. Alright. Ace has the knowledge and experience of battle at a high level, so I'll demonstrate what it means to be a noob like you. Did this guy seriously just use late 2000s era internet speak? Caesar? Boy, I, I don't know if I can let you get away with that or not. Even if you have a Sizzler, which kind of sounds like your name. Caesar and his Sizzler. Hopefully you don't try to finish me off with False Swipe, because that normally doesn't go too well. Scizor is a Gen 2 Pokemon, evolves from Scyther, and has a pretty damn good defense. It's a bit slower than its pre-evolution, but, you know, decent trade-off. Let's see, I might switch in Torterra, maybe? I'm trying to think of who to switch in. Yeah, I'll go with Torterra. Give Kane a bit of a break. He's been going at it all day. So what have you guys been doing for New Year's? I know this, this video will be up long past that, but what did you guys do for New Year's? How about, just tell me that. In the comments, did you guys have a lot of drinks? I didn't get any champagne this year, but I did have my trusty Guinness that I'm drinking on right now. Always a good beverage to have. And if you guys don't drink, well that's cool. I don't judge you at all for that. I know my buddy John chooses not to partake, and there's nothing wrong with that. Lots of Magnemites in here, I noticed, which is like the original Steel-type Pokémon, so... Stick into your roots, I guess. I mean, I would appreciate a bit more diversity, but what can you do? Well, the last time I talked about diversity, I almost got my ass kicked with uh, Fantina. Hopefully that didn't go that way this time, because seriously, that was... kinda embarrassing. Wait, did I come from here? I think I did. Let's see. What's um there's two ways I can go this time. That goes nowhere, so that was kind of a waste of time. <laughs> this, on the other hand, seems like it's actual progress. Let's go this way. A lot of karate dudes for a steel type gym. Gotta say. Mr. David, like David Production, the group that makes JoJo's Bizarre Adventure anime. You guys do a good job. I don't know if David, Pro David Production was actually watching this, or somebody from that studio anyway. That'd be something. And we finally got some snow tonight, by the way, here in Texas. <laughs> Thanks for the sandstorm, bitch. My entire fucking team, except for one Pokemon, is ground type. You're an idiot. And we finally got snow. I almost slipped today. I was outside uh, the parking lot at HEB and I fucking had to like watch my feet. 
Went and got me some delicious ravioli that I'll eat later, because I didn't eat it now. I just ate some Hot Pockets tonight, because I had this, like, they had this deal at HCB the other day on a bunch of free Hot Pockets, and I was like, dude, I'm about to be all over that. So that's all I ate tonight. Some good old Hot Pockets. Yeah, I got some good ravioli, though. It's like spinach and uh, different kinds of cheese, and... It's good because this is the kind you don't need to put sauce on. You just put like some olive oil on it and eat it straight up. Which is pretty dang good. But... Let's uh, forge on here. No pun intended. I know we're in a steel type gym here, but... You know, talking about forging like an iron forge. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck I'm saying. Uh, let's see here. Kind of want to get Cane of Water out there again, but I need to heal him. Let's see here. I think I still have some milk. He needs some milk. Fucking K2, man. I don't even, like, joke about K2. Because that stuff is, like, just beyond fucked. And I'll tell you right now, yes, I did try K2 one time. Uh, twice, actually. One of the times was, to be fair, when I was tricked into it. My friend gave me what he told me was weed. But the blunt was already rolled up. And I didn't know it was going to be K2. So, I smoked literally an entire fucking blunt of K2, which is way more than anybody, like, even if for some reason you're going to do it, you should never smoke an entire blunt of it. That's just... no. I would say never do it to begin with, but... Seriously, dude. Just steer clear of that. Fucking... oh my god. Because he gave me, yeah, an entire blunt of it, and took me to some Chinese restaurant, uh, Summer Palace, the one down by my house, and it just, like, what happened was, after I had smoked the blunt, within about five minutes, I had already been feeling the sort of weed high, so to speak, like, I already could, t like, I felt like I was high off a of regular weed, and then... No, like, by the time we went to go pick up my friend, I had no idea, like, where we were, where we were going, why we were going there. It was like that one song, um, Lil White did, called Acid, where he's like, where are we at and why are we leaving? Something, something, what is the season? That was, like, seriously what it felt like. I didn't know why we were going. I didn't know who was getting in the car. I thought cops were coming to arrest us or something because it was just some person walking up to the car and like the whole background was just a fucking black void. Man. And then she was like, it looked like she was upside down like from my perspective. Uh... And then as soon as I got out of the car, it essentially looked like everything was just, like, vibrating, kind of like that, like that animation right there for extra sensory. That's how everything looked to me, just kind of going back and forth. And then we got into the restaurant, and Donovan pretty much revealed to me, yeah, that wasn't actually weed, that was that stuff I was telling you about earlier, because he mentioned K2 before. And he's like, yeah, that's that Diablo stuff, because it was a, it wasn't literally K2, but like K2 is what everyone essentially calls it. And here we are at the leader. All right. Uh, who should I lead off with? I want to heal up regardless. Hmm. Gotta think this one through all the way. I. Ah, shit. I'll lead off with Rance, I guess, just for something different. 
All right, my dude, let's do it. And that is true, this guy is the father of Rourke. Mr. Byron. A lot of family ties going on in this LP. The Steel-type gym leader is in fact the father of the Rock-type. Starting off with a Magneton level 37. Not gonna be too bad for us, thankfully we do have Dig. Courtesy of Rance leveling up in the Iron Island. Can we take it out in one hit is the question. We are four times effective, so hopefully. Alright, good job, Rance, getting that critical hit off the bat. Up next we have Steelix once again. Let's get a cane of water in there. Because we want a special attacker. Steelix's defense is pretty damn impenetrable. Even with a dig, it would be quite hard to take it out, so we're going to use our good old Surf instead. It may know Sunny Day, and I say this because Jasmine's Steelix knows Sunny Day, but maybe not. Alright, good job. I believe rounding things off will be... I'm going to say Bastodion, I think it's that. Ooh, oh yeah, I want that move right there. Muddy Water, which used to be the signature move of um, Swamp Hurt. That is an amazing move that will absolutely wreck shop. Yes, it is Bastodion. Okay, let's keep Cane of Water in for this then. That is a fossil Pokemon of this generation, which as I've said before, I don't much care for the design of. Let's go ahead and use that new move though, how about it? Muddy Water, which is just the animation of Surf, but brown instead of blue, so... We can in fact lower the accuracy of this Pokemon, thankfully, although it's going to heal. Alright. It's coming in with a taunt, which will not affect us because we do not use non-attacking moves on this Pokemon right now. Oh, and he's gonna come in with a dodge! Alright, Metal Burst, but it fails for some reason. I guess because he has to have an attack get on him at first to even have that attack work. But I think that's going to be Curtains for Bastodion, and therefore Cane of Water has led us to another victory. Yeah, if you have a special attacker, this gym is kind of a joke. <laughs> I'm sorry. This guy is no Clay from Generation f uh, si 5. I couldn't even say 5, what the fuck. Yeah, we have the Mine Badge, which will allow us to use Strength. Well, as a new TM. Flash Cannon is a very powerful move, but I don't think any of our Pokemon can learn it, sadly. Alright, with six badges in tow, let's make our exit. What do you say? All the way down, baby. How do you like that? Congratulations, you can count. You know what? Yeah, I agree with you there, though, that nobody would, uh... No, oh, hey. My boy Chicken. What are we going back here for, my dude? Why didn't you go inside? That was entirely pointless. Man, where did he get to this time? I've already read this entire library's repertoire, so you better have something good to show me. Oh, hello, Dawn and Professor Rowan. You know, I could have came here myself, but... Oh, okay, he wants him to stay. Alright. I didn't forget that quickly, my dude. You are... A very studious professor. I would say that's actually true, yeah. Because most of the non-evolving Pokémon are already in a mature-looking state. Like Carnivine. 
Hmm. You make a fair point there. Legendaries do not evolve, so we're gonna have to figure out if that has any correlation to what you're saying. And once again, yeah, that's exactly... Yeah, true, true enough. That was all the way back in, like, part two or one or whatever. I can't remember what part that was actually in. And yeah, even without a Pokedex, just seeing it with your own eyes is quite the experience. Alright, it's gonna be just like Halo 3. We've got... What the hell do I do then? Oh, of course you are, Barry. Where we all take out the three different towers in Halo 3. Lake Valor? I believe we have passed that place up, but there was like reporters in the way last time. Oh shit. You just had to say something, Professor. These guys are literally terrorists. I mean, why you gotta be setting off bombs, man? That's completely uncool. Oh yeah, the cameraman, that's right. And of course, the lake that I'm gonna go to anyway. Hmm. Once again, makes a good point. I mean, even the waifus can sometimes cause aftershocks, but with a bomb like that, man, you really never know. No shit, it wasn't natural, you just saw the news. Oh, you're incredibly dismissive about that. We, what is this, Star Wars? Yeah, we should definitely head there, because I'm not going to let some dude set off bombs unless it's in the studio. And don't worry about me. I'm going to be heading up to Lake Valor next time when Let's Play Pokemon Platinum. And until then, stay safe from all bombs and other threats. This has been Love Game. Bringing you guys the uh, dankest LPs of 2018 and signing out for now.